Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey, you guys, coming at you from the Wild Nun Cut podcast. We are with the gorgeous Miss Brittany Boddington at SCI's <laughs> 51st convention. And in my Nashville. 20th anniversary at is SCI. It really? Yes. That my is, first SCI so, well, was your 2003. Family is like super ingrained in not only philanthropy, <laughs> hunting, conservation, like, you know, your dad's like super impressive human being. I don't even know how many years he's been coming yeah. to this, but I actually didn't start hunting until I was an adult. So my first hunt was in 2003. Adult and also, onset yeah. hunter, which is probably <laughs> yes. why you started Late she onset. hunts. But we, yeah. Well, I grew up in LA, yeah. so nobody was hunting friendly in I LA. I can't imagine your I dad know. living in he LA. He didn't. Okay. I was going to say, I just don't <laughs> he see did. this happening. But the reason okay. that he lived in LA is because in those days, Peterson's Hunting Magazine was centered on Sunset Boulevard in LA. So he moved there to be the editor of Peterson's Hunting Magazine. That's where he met my mom. I had no idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, hold on. Let me just adjust this. I just want to make sure yep. I got you. Do you got me? I, I don't know. I can't tell without Yogi putting <laughs> head so, headphones on. Okay. okay. <laughs> I had no idea that that was a California cut because California is obviously the landscape and culture within California has had a dramatic shift, especially yeah. every year. It just gets a little... Weirder. Yeah. That's okay. You <laughs> you say say it. I'm like, oh, how am I going to work I don't live this there yet? anymore. I won't I be offended. Yeah, no, it, it does get a lot weirder. Yeah. So you grew up as a like total city girl. Yeah, I did. And I really just didn't want to hear about it. My dad would try to talk to me about hunting. I, I didn't want to hear it. And you know, that teenage rebel thing. Yeah. I just was like, I'm out. That's your thing, whatever. Um, and it was only later when I was graduating high school and my graduation present was to be a trip to Africa, which would be my first exposure. But my dad was going to do a photo safari with me, and that was it. And when I started Googling what can you do in Africa, hunting kept coming up. And I started reading about it, and it was actually reading other people's articles, not my dad's, that convinced of me to course, hunt. Because, you know, course, rebels. Of course, you know, her dad is like a <laughs> world-renowned hunter, and heaven forbid you listen to yeah, your dad. Yeah, you can't listen to but your dad. But it's like learning from your husband. Sometimes yes, it's better not to. that's why we started She Hunts. <laughs> You know, it's we're exactly handicapped right. by chivalry in the yes. outdoor industry. Guys set up the guns, they take you hunting, they point it at the animal, you pull the trigger, they take it away. But that mm-hmm. doesn't make you feel like a hunter. No. It makes you feel like a shooter, yes. But if you can't take the gun out of the safe on your own and go out in the field mm-hmm. by yourself, you don't feel like a real hunter. No. So she hunts really encompasses everything that you need to know to be independent in the outdoors. We talk about mounting your own scope and sighting in your own rifle and gun care, gun cleaning. We talk about field dressing. We do everything. We try to take it from top to bottom and really encompass everything you need to be independent to really stand on your own two feet in the outdoors. So backing this up, Sorry. because <laughs> Brittany was an adult onset hunter, yes, you <laughs> can relate to a woman that wants to get into hunting and doesn't have a clue maybe where to start. Right. And so you founded an organization called She Hunts where you have camps at your home in Texas. Yes. And Not you, at my home, at Record Buck Ranch. Okay, at yep. Record Buck Ranch in mm-hmm. Texas. And you bring in women for these camps to get these very valuable skills so they have the confidence to go in the outdoors and yes. actually hunt. And we have so many women that are like, I'm sorry, I've already been hunting like, I don't need this. Everybody but I'm like, needs to learn. But have you mounted your own scope? Yes. They're like, oh, wait a minute. So we have ladies that have literally never pulled the trigger, yeah. come to camp. And we have ladies that have hunted Africa 10 times, mm-hmm. but have just never set up their own gun. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had a lady tell me recently that she was like, I thought I had it all figured out. And then I went on a hunt by myself and my gun got bumped in the case. Oh. When I got there, the guide was like, no big deal. We'll just loosen the screws and fix the scope. And then you can sight it in again. And she was like, uh-oh. 
yeah. <laughs> uh oh, yeah. I don't got it. Yeah. And so she came to us just because she's like, these are basic things mm-hmm. that if you are going to be an independent mm-hmm. female hunter, you need to know how to set up your tools. And you I know? can totally relate to that because I grew up hunting my whole life. I hunted. And in my 20s, I had a friend in the industry and he pulls me aside and he's like, Christy, you're great. I love you. You've you know, road mules and, and done this hunting thing your whole life, but you suck at a couple of things, backpack hunting <laughs> and shooting. And he was right. I was a terrible marksman. And, and when really? I, it, well, yeah, I mean, I didn't start training. With well, I've never heard that. So that's oh, good. <laughs> horrible. I couldn't shoot 400 yards to fight myself. I mean, I just couldn't do it. Like I was on a hunt and I had a 400 yard shot on a cow elk and I was like, I can't do this. And, and I was completely unprepared, and if I would have done it, I would have probably missed or flinched. Or, or wounded. My or fundamentals right. of marksmanship were horrible. Yeah, so I, I, looked, I took a hard look in the mirror at 30, and I was like, you got to get your life together. I got to fix some stuff. I got to yep. fix some stuff, yep. and I did. And I started taking some training, and I, mm-hmm. and I, and I got very involved. You can in, come see us anytime. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> it's so important. So now, you know, I've done all these training classes. Now mm-hmm. I compete. Um, in national level long range precision yeah, competitions awesome. and, and I try to do those not because I think I'm great and I'm like oh I need to go to a rifle match because I'm so good it's I want to go to a rifle match so that I'm the best I can be on a You're hunt. You're pushing yourself yeah. And I learned how to mount my own optics I learned how to gather my own data so when I do shoot um, my long range like I shoot extreme long range now so we shoot up to 2200 yards That's I get awesome. my own data I do the whole deal uh, and I don't have to wait around for some guy to show mm-hmm. me how to do it. Exactly. Which is totally condescending and paralyzing as a woman. And I hate yeah. that. Yeah. Like, I love to know that I can do my own thing. But I was 30 before I got my life together and was humble <laughs> enough to be like, you know what? I suck. And now I still think that I suck at a lot of things. And I train constantly. And I find people that know more or are better than I am at whatever it might be. And I... I tuck my tail in between my legs and I show up ready to learn and and with a good attitude. And I think that's so important that we don't ever get to the point where we think we are so great that we don't need anything or assistance or we don't have anything to learn because that's when you die. Right. Well, I totally agree. And I I feel like we've never had a bad apple come through camp. And I feel like what you just talked about, about tucking your tail and coming to learn. Mm -hmm. When people decide to come to She Hunts and they buy themselves that weekend to come and do that, by the time they get to me, they are so ready to absorb. We've had the most amazing women come through camp. I have so many new friends. (laughs) Yes. And it's incredible. And you know, I really found that my passion is teaching. Mm -hmm. I love being on the range. Mm -hmm. I love talking about trigger control. I love talking about breath control. I love it. I'm passionate about it. And you know, the TV stuff was fun. I did TV for 15 years. That was amazing. But actually, the part that I'm most passionate about Mm -hmm. is sharing my experience. And that's what I was doing through the camera. And Mm -hmm. I found the same passion and the same fulfillment through through She Hunts. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible. I would love to say it's a selfless project. It's not. I get so much fulfillment out of it. But the women that come through get so much more. Well, and it changes lives. It does. And it changes the optic of yourself and I know a lot of women especially like my sisters kind of going through this where they have been mothers and being Mm -hmm. a mother has been their identity for so many years and I think you're kind of in the middle of like you're in that mother identity right now a little two-year-old yes you have a baby and (laughs) she comes to all the camps well and but your baby becomes so your priority and as being a mother your children should be your priority 100 percent But then, you know, when your kids leave the home or they get older Mm -hmm. or you want to be the one to help guide them and mentor them through their early hunting life, Mm -hmm. improving on who you are as a woman gives you a greater gift that you can pass on to your children in in the form of a legacy. And 100%, what we say is if mom's hunting, the kids are hunting too. Yeah. If dad's hunting, sometimes he'll go and do that and mom will stay home. But if mom is also hunting, the kids are 100% in the field. So we are nurturing the next generation by getting these moms out there. And we have a lot of women that have come through. I'm thinking of one specifically that's a really good friend of mine. But she came to camp because she, first of all, never had pulled the trigger ever in her life. But she was like, my husband's either prepping for a hunt, researching a hunt, packing for the hunt, on the hunt, or unpacking from the hunt. Mm -hmm. But that's all. (laughs) She's like, and I am absolutely done with it. I'm done being the mom at home. Her kids are older now. And she's like, I, I want to be in, in on this. Yeah. Like, I want part of this. Mm-hmm. She showed up in camp having never pulled a trigger, ever, ever, on anything. So I took her to the range. We started on 22. I worked her right up. Before she left camp, she was like, the second to last day, she's like, if I was going to hunt while I'm here, ah. what's the most quantity of quality meat that I could take home with me? Mm-hmm. I'm like, a, a, a bison? 
And she's like, what's the kill zone on a bison? I said, you know, like this? She's like, in. <laughs> and she took a 375 H&H, just decimated that thing. <laughs> just went out bison and I brought mean, the meat home. She she literally had yep. her club in her hand, oh my pummeled gosh. it, drug it home. She That's hit it perfect. in the shoulder, reloaded, it spun around. She hit it in the second shoulder, it tied on the spot. It was incredible. And she's so proud of that. And that yeah. bison is hanging in their of living course, room. as it should be. And everyone that walks in their house is like, oh, is that his? She's like, nope. That's it's mine. mine. That's awesome. <laughs> and he shot all kinds of stuff, but hers hangs in the living room, not his. Not his. <laughs> his is so somewhere. proud of her, and it's something they do together now. Mm. They were in Hawaii last year together. They're going to Africa. They went to New Zealand. They're all over the place, and it's incredible. That is one thing I think that um, cannot be understated, the relationship that is yeah. formed through hunting. Like, you know, my husband obviously is my best friend. We get to do the coolest stuff together. Now, last year we kind of pushed the boundary on that with 11 days no shower in a two-man tent. Yep. That was a real intimate <laughs> marriage at that point. <laughs> um, don't recommend. No, we started that Ten out that of ten. We did that when we were dating in yeah. Kyrgyzstan. It was gnarly. Not, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is great. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was like, if we can survive this, we can do anything. You can do anything. <laughs> you think your husband's mad at you? Just wait till you spend 11 days in a tent with him. We'll see how sick of you he gets. Uh, yeah. No. Um, but it is it is truly uh, a very bonding experience. It's some of the best memories I have with my own father are hunting. So now you began your hunting journey. You decided you were going to hunt, not because you were reading your dad's articles, but because you were reading other people's articles. Yes. But did you go hunting with your dad? Yes. So I started reading about all the different things that you can do in Africa. And I thought one of the coolest things that I was reading about was safari, obviously. And I wasn't sure that I really wanted to pull the trigger, but I really liked the idea of a zebra rug as well. So <laughs> that one They're got me. Beautiful. I was like... You know, maybe I should start to learn to shoot in case, so I have options. So I asked my dad while uh, while we were driving, which was a mistake, um, <laughs> if he could teach me how to shoot. And he almost piled the car because uh, he was so excited. He was like, "Absolutely!" Mm -hmm. But then when I asked him to best day of his life, right yes, there, and we went shooting, and it was great. But I learned to shoot to hunt, mm -hmm. not to shoot. So I was never a shooter. So I started on the sticks. And as long as I could hit a kill zone, he was like, cool, perfect, Good ready job. to go hunting. And so we went hunting. Well, he didn't want to book a safari because he thought I'd chicken out. And so the deal was if I could shoot a pig in California mm -hmm. successfully, then he would book a safari because he didn't want to wait and get there and have me chicken out. Yes. And so we went pig hunting in California, wild boar hunting in California. And uh, we had an awesome time. It was actually a huge sounder of pigs that came over this ridge. And he said, okay, shoot the one with the black spot. And I shot the one with the black spot. He said, miss. I'm like, no, Dad, it's not a mess. It's rolling down the hill. Well, there were two with black spots, one in the front and one in the back. I shot the one in the back. <laughs> he was talking about the one in the front. But it's fine. I, I've had a similar situation with my dad as well. <laughs> but it was, it was fine. It was it a perfectly yeah, legal perfect. pig. It was, yeah. it was fine. Um, but well, anyways, I think all the pigs are legal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, it was rolling down the hill. When we got up to it, he's like, honey, are you okay? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it dead? Is it right? Can I touch it? He's like so excited. He was like, all right, we've created a monster. And so we went to Africa on that first safari to Namibia uh, with Dirk Tabad, and I took five animals on mm -hmm. that first safari, and it was an incredible experience. Yeah. I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. I ended up spending most of my 20s in Africa. I would come back and work enough jobs to afford to get back and go back and help and work on the ranches. So I learned a lot about hunting that way. Yeah, I didn't. And I would realize stay my you, three months and then come back and you were doing that. work incredible. five jobs and then get enough money to go back again and then <laughs> stay my three months and come back again. And so you were basically just working yeah. off your yeah. tourist visa yeah. as much as you can, yes. but maintaining yeah. residency in the U.S. without having to fill all through the paperwork. and doing culling off season mm -hmm. and helping with ranches and really understanding the interdynamics of hunting and and how it works as a business and how it works as a system. It was an incredible eye opener coming from a safari industry where you only see one side of the table, mm -hmm. you know? And what so for me, the, it was what incredible. Was, what was the most, I think, uh, surprising dynamic of your time there? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I suppose when you are the uh, person coming on safari, you know, you're the you show up and you're so excited and it's really about your experience and they cater to you. I suppose for me, the eye opener was realizing that they do this all year mm -hmm. back to back and they have to have that same sunny face for every person that shows up, no matter how tired they are, no matter what's going on in their personal lives, it has no bearing on what the experience that they're going to give their client. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when you show up on a safari and you're like, oh, they're so happy to see me. This is incredible. Everybody's in a good mood. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's nothing going on in their lives. Like, yeah. 
you take for granted the fact that they put their personal stuff aside for you. Mm-hmm. I guess that was kind of an eye opener for me. The hospitality industry. The hospitality industry. Mm-hmm. You're in the entertainment industry, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and that they put on a happy face no matter what's going on. Mm-hmm. And really yeah. just cater to make everybody's big experience their the best that they could. You know, a lot of people do an Africa trip once in their lives. Yeah. You know, and no matter what's going on in the guide's life, like they have to make that the best experience, experience that they can. Yeah. yeah. So talk about when you're with your time over there, to what capacity and, and in what regards were you giving back to communities and serving? Well, I suppose during that time, um, I was mostly just, you know, head down working on the ranches and stuff and hanging out. Um, Later, I got to spend a lot of time doing, like, the blue bag program Mm -hmm. with SCI. Mm -hmm. Um, We actually give out blue bags to all of our girls that come to She Hunts, and I fill it full of a full set of camo, a set of loophole binoculars. They get an Alps backpack. They get a starter kit for hunting. Um, But the blue bag is really an incredible program because the the bag itself is, is just a duffel. But the point of the bag is to fill it up and take it to communities that need it. Yeah. And we've had incredible experiences mm-hmm. doing so. And we've done it in Mozambique and Zimbabwe in Namibia. It's been... And you're probably getting photos back from your she hunt participants. Yeah. On they're doing how it they're still. now serving yeah. communities globally as well. Pay it forward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really an incredible program. And we've had so much fun. We actually took a, a bag of all of our girls. I have a bonus 11-year-old and our 2-year-old. Um, a few years ago, we took all of their all of their clothes, like mm-hmm. you know, yeah, gently used clothes, um, and we went to an orphanage. Mm-hmm. And we actually reached out to a bunch of our friends. So we had boys' clothes too, um, and we kind of made a collective. We had, I think we had three bags. Uh, we were with Tom Snyder from Trinity mm-hmm. Oaks as well. They, he bought a bunch of mattresses for them. We went, and it was so incredible to actually meet the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, we went there. We held the babies. It was, Aww. and it was so sweet. Like, they got to dig through. They're pulling toys out. I'm like, this one's mine. This one's mine. Like, it was so cute. It very was actually, yeah, it was very heartwarming. But it's incredible to now see, like you said, our clients paying it forward. So these blue bags that SCI provides for us, um, we give out to all the girls. And then through all of their adventures that they started going on because now they have the confidence yes. to go hunting and they're going with their husbands. And then they bring these blue bags and it's just a full circle mm-hmm. kind of thing. And we really, we really appreciate them using them, but it's so awesome to see. It is so rewarding. When this last trip we w- went, we brought a hundred pounds of different supplies and toothpaste yep. and medicine yep. and, and things for kids. And, you know, I had a bunch of sponsors send you know, hats, and especially like those kids, a lot of them don't have stocking caps and, yep. you know, they're cold. And, yep. they, you know, the, the sad thing is, is there is so many orphanages and they're so reliant on tourism to help support those. Um, and during COVID, I think the, the shutdowns that we experienced, those people really, those yeah. kids really felt it so yeah. hard. And it was because of people that chose to still go hunting that those communities still receive yep. humanitarian aid because of programs like the Amy Bell Blue Bag Program, which yep. is, is truly remarkable. And I think that is a fantastic idea that you give those out and you plant that seed of paying it yep. forward in your camp. Well, I always tell the ladies, like, here's your present, but it's not just for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to use this bag. That's the catch. That's the caveat. Because we give you all this gear and it doesn't mean it's just a bag to carry your stuff home. You have to use it in the future you have and to pay, pay it forward. forward. Yeah, we're going to fill yeah. this full of wonderful things for yeah. you, but we want you to fill this yeah. full of wonderful things for someone else later on. Yeah. No matter where you pursue the wild, never leave home without Onyx Hunt. Onyx gives hunters the confidence to apply and draw tags in areas they've never set foot in, extending hunting seasons and opportunities. Always know where you stand with public and private land layers, unit boundaries, and more. Onyx can even be downloaded directly to your phone for use when you don't have service. Wherever you pursue the wild, hunt with Onyx life-changing medicines and things yeah. it's really incredible that you're doing that so what is what is an actual like camp like so when people show up that's a lot of fun to your camp <laughs> what is the program how does it break down so you fly in and out of san antonio um <laughs> the record buck ranch is about an hour and a half out of san antonio so i pick up and drop off at the san antonio airport and uh if ladies want to drive in they can drive in too if you're texas local mm-hmm. but um we start from the top and work to the bottom. So we start with mounting your own scope and mm-hmm. we end with wild game cooking mm-hmm. and then gun cleaning. So we literally go top to bottom. But in the middle, we do everything. 
We talk dangerous game. We talk shot placement. We do archery. We talk. We do shotgunning with when Kaylee Browning comes and teaches mm -hmm. Olympic shotgun shooter, um, Rihanna Franz, like national champ. I mean, they're they're incredible. Um, my dad comes to camp and does a dangerous game seminar, oh, and he I does shot that. placement. I only let him teach it because he wrote the book on it. Literally, <laughs> literally <laughs> wrote the book. It's okay. I only literally. let him teach it because he wrote the book on it. There's, I yeah. used to teach. I enjoy teaching it, but that's fine. Um, and, and we talk about everything in between, and it's a lot of fun. So there's a lot of seminars, but we leave a couple hours in the morning and a couple hours in the evening. So if the ladies do want to add on a hunt after they've been to the range, shot the guns, and are comfortable with them. They can do that. They can do so. Um, there's 50 species on the ranch mm -hmm. at Record Back. It's incredible. So. And how many days is this event? Five, Thursday to Monday. So five-day event. So it's yep. complete skills immersion. Yes, So they 100%. start with, there is with no downtime. learning how to mount an optic. <laughs> they sight yes. in their rifle. They are learning during the day in non-hunting times. They can go hunting. Yes, and if they're not hunting, we go on game drives. We identify animals. We talk about shot placement. Like where would yes. you? Yes. If you were hunting, 100%. what would you do? Yes. Yes. It's so really are you getting out and walking and doing some like still hunting on this experience? We are not, only because um, it's hard with a group. The animals yeah. run. Yeah. Um, but we do, when we talk about wilderness survival, we go out in the field and we do a little bit of tracking talk. We talk, I mean, overview. Mm -hmm. But this year we've launched She Hunts 2.0 for October. This is for alumni only that have been through the first camp and we're going to go a lot more in depth on all of those things. That is so exciting. Yes, it's very exciting. That is so much fun. <laughs> well, we had ladies coming for their third and fourth camps mm -hmm. and I'm like, you guys, it's the same material. You guys have been <laughs> like, here, done this. Like, I love times. you too, but <laughs> it's the same material. Yeah. So you're giving so, them something more. So we're doing something new. So what are you changing in the 2.0 program? Ooh, we're going to do so many fun things. I want to talk about um, shotgun games, mm -hmm. traps, the differences between um, sporting plays, and then we're going to do uh, demos about hunting over dogs, which is important. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also going to do a lot of orienteering. We're going to do long range shooting. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a hundred ideas, but it's not till October, so I haven't finalized everything. You're still yet, working on the curriculum, but yeah. it's already sold out. From the moment I released it, so. I had 25 women sign up. Well, I have 16 ish spots. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, women change their mind really rapidly, so. <laughs> <laughs> so she got everybody Some in. have kids in school and some have changed and some are having babies. So we're back down to a manageable number. But, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, it sold out overnight. Yeah. So, so how exciting. many instructors do you have running these courses at just a time? me, my dad, and Brad, my husband. Wow. So yeah, it's the three of you. Just the three of us. Well, and we bring in um, a celebrity chef for yeah. every camp. We bring in a shotgun shooter for every camp that Craig off sponsors. Um, and so that kind of thing. Like, we'll have guest seminar teachers, mm -hmm. but the nuts and bolts are us. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. So I know absolutely <laughs> nothing about shooting a shotgun. I'm so bad. Oh, so bad. Cross dominant. Yep, I should same. shoot left handed. So what do you do? Do you put tape over your eye? Do you obscure <sighs> you your know, glass? What do you do? I've heard it a hundred different ways. But the best advice is keep both eyes open. Get your gun. Get your cheek seated on your gun. Think turtleneck. Stretch forward. Get your head seated properly to where when you close one eye, you see the beads properly. Mm -hmm. And then open your eyes and look at the target. Your hand eye figures that out. Mm -hmm. I've always had to ex obscure because I, I find that I'm looking like if this is the barrel but of my. But if you're aiming it, you're shooting it wrong because you don't aim a shotgun. Uh huh. It's just hand eye coordination. Instinct. So. See, so that's my problem. Hey. <laughs> this is my problem. Here's we a little just, mini seminar here. We just here. <laughs> self diagnosed why I suck yes. with a shotgun. I'm so cross dominant beads, and I'm aiming. So the beads on a shotgun are only to check fit. They're not meant for aiming. See, this is where I'm doing so it So when wrong. you get your head down on a shotgun, you make the figure eight mm -hmm. out of your beads, and then you forget they exist, and look at the target. This is why I and don't And as shoot long as shotgun. you don't move your head up, or the down. gun will go where your eyes go. Interesting. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> I love this. This is why I need to do her camp, You actually. really should. It would be a lot actually, of fun. You, let, you teach me how to shoot a shotgun, I'll teach you how to shoot long range. <laughs> we can do a little sloppy rooting. I promise you I will not be the coach, because I am not that good. <laughs> But I've heard them teach it a hundred times. A so. lot, yeah. Well, and Kaylee Browning, she's incredible. She's she was incredible. actually supposed to be here. I, she's she, here. She, I was going to say. She's in the Craig Off booth. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she shot say. with us yesterday. Okay. We just did the Craig Off shoot. We got third place, by the way. Oh, I know. You I'm crushed pretty it. excited myself. Yeah. Our name of our team was Crush It. No, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. That is so funny. Of course it was. Yeah, we got uh, third place. Birds of a Feather. We would have shot together. better if I had shot better. But <laughs> <laughs> you're like, well, the I was the weak link for sure. Well, you are shooting with Olympic shooters. So she did really well. Of course. And she was on our team. Yeah, so. you're like, um, I'll take the gal that's yes, the they Olympic don't count her shooter score, Her score, though. None of the Craigoff shooters were counted, so. Yeah. So she who didn't else bring is up the here from Craigoff? Um, Do you know? 
There's other people here. There's a lot of There's them. There's a lot of them. <laughs> I know uh, Rachel Carey's here. Uh-huh. Um, Vicky's here. I can't think of her last name. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's quite a few. I know Rihanna's not here for this mm-hmm. show, but she uh, but she used to be in my booth for all of the shows. So, mm-hmm. But she comes to all of our camps. So she's Rihanna's, uh, Rihanna Franz. She's mm-hmm. national champ. She was uh, team captain of Team USA. She's incredible. Um, but she comes to a lot of our camps. She's a good yeah. friend now. And Kaylee's coming in April again. She's been to like four of the camps now. Mm-hmm. We have had so much amazing coaching through our camps. And we're really fortunate Craig Off's been a sponsor since the very yeah. beginning. They helped us get off the ground. And um, so all the ladies that come through camp get to shoot the fancy Victoria oh. or my custom Craig Off. <laughs> wow, that's yes, and these are expensive it. shotguns. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like real expensive. You yes, know what shotgun I have? Them. I have um, a Ruger Red Label uh kind of break over and then I've got a Benelli youth pump awesome that's it a youth? <laughs> that's a youth pump <laughs> a youth pump because I'm so small Aww. I started shooting a youth shotgun um, and I still have that you thing. know to be honest most of the ladies guns are are the youth guns mm-hmm. they're the same length stock yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's the, not just it's you. Fine. It's not just me. <laughs> I'm little. Whatever. It's but fine. But um, our, our rifles that we use in camp are from Weatherby. So mm-hmm. we have the Weatherby Camillas, mm-hmm. which are made for women, which are also very well, similar a to a youth company. size stock. They're a Wyoming company. Yeah. They're my neighbors. Yeah. Oh, they're amazing. They're fantastic people. We're so happy with them. And the guns have just been incredible. And the girls get huge discounts from all of these companies if they end up wanting to, you know, get the gear that they use in camp. So mm-hmm. we've been so fortunate with sponsors from the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, they've jumped in and, and we've really had very little turnover we're, we're so fortunate yeah we don't ask for money we only ask for product for mm-hmm. the girls so yeah so you're yeah. you know when you when you show up there's 16 women in a camp you have 16 rifles it's supposed to be 12 objects. okay it's supposed to be 12 but then we get the can my sister come can my daughter come last minute and so it's, it's anywhere between no. 12 and 16 yeah. yeah and so you have all these rifles set up and ready yes. to go optics are not mounted on them they're sitting beside them. So I them. have a uh, half a dozen um, or so 708s. Mm-hmm. I love 708. It's what I started hunting with, okay. and I love that caliber. Um, and I rip all of the scopes off, and uh, and then I have half a dozen 223s as well. Um, and so the girls get to mount scopes on either of those. Um, and then once we go to the range, we sight everything in, and then we triple check it. So we double check it, we triple check it um, to make sure that everything's dead on. And before the girls go hunting, they all have a chance to shoot the higher caliber, obviously mm-hmm. the 708s. And we have heavier stuff if they want to shoot bigger stuff. Yeah. Um, but we work up from the 223. 223 mm-hmm. is such a wonderful caliber oh, yeah, because it's, it's got enough sure. bang that you understand. Mm-hmm. Like a, t- a 22 doesn't have yeah. enough bang to really understand what recoil no. is. Um, and we talk about my favorite trick, which I don't know if you've heard yet. If you have a hat on, as long as your hat clears the scope, you're not going to scope you're yourself. You're not going to yeah. scope yourself. And I really rely on that a lot because I always have a hat on. I so. always do the little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does it hit? If it hits, if yeah. your brim is you get touching too excited, that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and so we go through all of that. But the weather bees have been incredible um, on the range and off. But the girls really start from naked guns, you know, nothing on. They get their screw kits. They have the um, the Tipton gun mm-hmm. vices. They have the Tipton uh, torque wrench. That's mm-hmm. the word I'm looking for. Um, and they put everything on. And then we go to the range the next day. We talk about bore sighting. And we actually sight in the rifles. And we check them. And then they go into um, shot placement. And then after that, we do uh, shooting rest methods. Mm-hmm. So they get to shoot from prone. They shoot from sitting. They shoot from the sticks. We talk about stickology 101. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> sticks can be an enemy if you don't know how to use yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, and you know. I, I'm a. I don't go anywhere without my tripod personally. Yes. Like I'm a yes. tripod fan, and if you see me on any of my hunting episodes, if I'm on an active stock, I've got my tripod legs deployed. It's in my <laughs> hand, and I'm like, <laughs> yep. and I don't go anywhere without it. Yep. Like I, I have that, so I can just set it but up. But if and, you don't know shoot. that one leg has to go forward, yeah. You know, if you're if you're standing over a leg, then it's une- uneven. That's exactly you need right. to be able to put weight on it. Mm-hmm. And so we really go go through all of that, and then all the ladies get to yes, yeah, stickology 101. And then all the ladies get a chance to go through that. And it really helps. It helps build confidence and it also helps them just familiarize with your equipment. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're able to shoot on the range, it doesn't mean you're able to hunt. No. Because when you jump out of the truck and they throw this sticks up and you don't know what to do with it, I mean, mm-hmm. people are fumbling through. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure a lot of times they succeed, but it's so nice to know what you're doing. It's and I so feel nice women, to have what's called unconscious competence. Yes. Oh, that I you've love that term. you've practiced at home and you've mm-hmm. practiced enough that you are unconsciously competent in uh, the pressure moment, high yes, pressure moment. I love that. I'm going to use that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take that. So there's two <laughs> kinds of competence. There's okay. conscious competence, which is what you're practicing. Mm-hmm. 
So you're consciously developing muscle competence. Muscle memory, competence, and that yeah. Muscle memory, exactly. And you practice it enough to where it becomes unconscious. Yes. So if you think about your fundamentals of marksmanship when you're behind a rifle, okay, I've got my breath control, sight picture, sight alignment, everything's okay, <sighs> relax, yeah. ready, press the trigger, boom. Like, you do these things, you know, checking your parallax. You do these things so quick that you don't even think about it. It becomes it's unconscious. one movement. Yep. But when you're a novice and you're learning, you consciously have to go through these steps. So that's the difference between conscious competence and unconscious competence. And so yep. the nice thing is, is after you graduate your program, when someone steps into the field and if they are with a pH and they throw sticks down, they have the conscious competence to... Make the shot, make it count, and yes. have a great experience. Yes, yes, that's so interesting. When you were talking about that just now, you reminded me of my bow shooting mm -hmm. because I am so not competent. I've started shooting. I've killed stuff with a bow, but every time I pull the bow up, I'm, "Where's your bubble? Where's this? Where's mm -hmm. that?" It's it's step by step by step. Mm -hmm. I have a checklist in my head, yeah. and you're absolutely right. I don't do that with a rifle, mm -hmm. but I'd never thought about it mm -hmm. until you just said it. That's yeah. interesting. It's the difference between conscious and unconscious, yeah. but. That's the difference, in my opinion, on on how confident you are as well. So the more you can practice, the more yeah. confident you get, yeah. and the more that equ equates into a better hunting experience. Our tagline is develop skills and build confidence. Mm -hmm. So It's fantastic. Yeah. That's a great tagline, and that's what you're really doing. You're giving women skills to empower themselves to have a life long experience. I wish I'd drug the ladies over here that are actually in my booth holding the fort right now. They're but, like, uh, would you come back please? Hello. are my little <laughs> success stories as well. One of them whose husband has hunted Africa a million times and she's been with him but never had actually hunted. Mm -hmm. um, and she just shot her first buffalo this year. Oh, that's so I know. Exciting. And she's been hunting all over the world mm -hmm. now. She loves it. They've been having so much fun doing these things together, mm -hmm. you know, for the first time. And it's such an incredible thing when they write back to me and say, this is because of you. Yeah. This is, this is because of the camp, mm -hmm. you know, and now we can do this together and it's building our relationship stronger. You know, our marriage is better because of this. It's so incredible. Yeah, it's, and it's I, really the it most does help thing. a marriage. I really believe that it's when you, you know, your husband goes and he takes off hunting and you're sitting at home and, uh, but yeah. when you go with him, yeah. whether you're hunting or not, I mean, there's the hunting is not for everyone, whether you Yes. Hunt or not, being a part of that journey is really important. I don't know if you've talked to her yet, but um, Sue Tidwell. No. She wrote the book Cries for the Cries of the Savannah. Um, it's an incredible book, and she she writes about being the wife of mm -hmm. the hunter in Africa and following him on his hunts. Well, she gave me a copy of the book uh, a few years ago, and I was like, "Listen, you need to come to camp." She's like, "Okay, but." my narrative is, you know, I'm the wife. I, like, I, I don't need to yeah. pull the trigger. I'm like, I don't care. If you're going to be hunting dangerous game behind your husband, whether you're pulling the trigger or not, you need to know how to handle a rifle. Yeah. She was like, well, I'd never thought of that before. Mm -hmm. It's like, what if something happens? Yeah. You know, you need to be able to respond. Mm -hmm. You need to have the muscle memory to be able to respond in a situation in case, I mean, if you're going to continue hunting dangerous games, which she is. Yeah. And so she came through camp. She loved it. She had so much fun. And she was like, I feel so much better going in the field because I know yeah. what they're talking about. Yeah, and she knows I know what they're what talking about. She now. knows what to expect as well. And she knows how to be a better follower mm -hmm. if she's only going to follow him on hunt. She knows what not to do. Mm -hmm. She knows what to anticipate with the rifle. She knows how, you know, the rifle handling goes. She knows how to stay out of it. You know, she also because of that can now carry a gun, you know, mm -hmm. safely, yeah. which is incredible. And she, she's, she's my best little spokeswoman now. <laughs> it's like adult onset yes. advanced hunter ed. Yes, my husband is. and I just became hunter ed instructors yeah. last week oh, and, that's um, awesome. well, for the state of Wyoming. And so we, we literally have five days invested into becoming a hunter ed instructor. The, they're, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. They, yeah. I mean, so, but we had so much fun <laughs> and just see these little kids yeah. get, conservation through hunting and carry understanding carrying capacities yep. and all of this stuff it was really awesome um how to but, unload your gun safely i mean it's things you don't think about you know but if if there was to be an issue you need to know how to handle a rifle absolutely yeah you know? and, and and not only that be able to identify the condition of yes. a rifle yes like look 100%. at it and, and so if you're a non-hunter yep. you can look at it and be like oh that person's being unsafe so mm -hmm. you can help keep yourself safe exactly. as well for those that maybe aren't practicing good firearm safety <laughs> like hey uh can you please open the bolt on that right like so funny i actually went through that course uh to do the, the hunter safety training as well. I was pregnant. I didn't know that you can't finish it. They wouldn't let me shoot. There, there, oh. There's a range portion. Okay, ours didn't let have me. a range oh, portion. Really? No, oh. in Arizona it does. Um, but they wouldn't let me shoot the range portion because I was pregnant. I was like, I'm barely, I was barely pregnant. I was like 
a few months pregnant. They were like, nope, sorry, we won't take the liability. But you can't finish it without the range portion. <laughs> I've never gone back. But I did the days, <laughs> days upon days sitting with the books in the classroom. <laughs> See, and that's interesting because my friend Jen O'Hare from... Um, yeah, I know Girl, Jen. So yep. Jen has... She, she went hunting with me last year. We went to Maui. And she was like... Yeah household pregnant like My she doctor was wouldn't allow the, it. well the doctor told her you know you can shoot up into a certain point when the eardrums and the baby yeah, in the, your womb are have a certain level of development um then you should not be shooting 26 weeks i think she told me 28 yeah like and i'm not sure so yeah. she, she we were there in mid-april she delivered in june sometime so she was right i mean she was as pregnant as she could be and still fly yeah <laughs> or the doctor's like time out you're mm-hmm. not you're not going and and so there is some shooting you can do but it is a thing like you can you have to watch out for babies undeveloped but little ears so in the womb. But I was surprised because I was within that safety yeah, zone you according were. to my doctor, but according to the NRA, they don't want to take not the liability. At all. Yeah. Not at all. Well, you can go back. No and pregnant get that. women on the range. It's like. Oh. <laughs> That's I know. Crazy. I just have to finish it. I just haven't gone back and done it. NRA. We have to update your protocol know, here. Right? <laughs> just barely pregnant is fine. <laughs> what if you don't know? You know, know what right? are they going to do then? I could have just not told them. You could have just not told them. Like, I'm not pregnant. I was being very honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, we learned that lesson. Yes. <laughs> I'm yes. just kidding. Don't lie. It's bad. Don't lie. <laughs> no. So how how do ladies register for your camp? So you have, what, four a year? Shehunts.com. <laughs> you do four a year? So the first year there was one, okay. the second year there was two, the third year there were three, and then COVID. And then when we got back to it, there were four, and I'm adding five next year. Five camps, yes. plus your advanced, or is that including the Including, which is why I had to add five. So five camps. This is like a major like hustle for you. I love it. How did you so end much. up getting your dad that much time from you? Like your dad. I don't know. I joke that it's his penance <laughs> for all the time he spent in Africa when I was a kid. You're like, guess what, dad? You're doing camps now. You know what? I've offered to pay him. He won't take it. He just That's loves okay. You it. keep the money. It's no, all good. he loves it. Yeah. Actually, I don't take a paycheck. I reinvest it into more equipment. and Yeah. But well, it is very expensive, the operating costs. I, um, on I those adore camps. it. I love it. It's mm-hmm. so much fun. And my dad gets so much fulfillment out of it, too. Yeah. He loves the teaching aspect. Yeah. And like I said, you know, when you, when you grow up doing TV, or as an adult, I, I say grow up from 18 up. Yeah. But you know, when you do TV, it, it's it's a beautiful outlet. You yeah. can be creative and you can tell your stories and, mm-hmm. you know, but at the end, you're, you're doing the same thing. Yeah. You're teaching, you're inspiring, mm-hmm. you're creating passion in the next generation. It's exactly what we're doing in the camp. Yeah. So my dad finds the same fulfillment I do, I think. Yeah. He really enjoys it, and he breaks his neck to be at every single one, and it's incredible. I'm so lucky. I keep waiting for the, it to run out, but he's there. He's there for everything. That's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. And so and these good togetherness they, for us, too. They range in date from, like, March, April. April. Next year we have May. The May camps are always kid-friendly. So the May camps, because the kids are out of school. Ten and up can come with mom in May, which is really fun. And then October camps are the 2.0. So really, it's the most beautiful times in Texas mm-hmm. is when I do it mm-hmm. because we used to do June and it's just too so hot. hot. It's too hot. And, you know, February, January, it's too cold, too cold. and we're here. So, yeah. Um, but no, March is beautiful. April's beautiful. Beginning of May is fine. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then, then October is also beautiful. Yeah. October can be a little rainy, but it's not bad. Mm-hmm. Usually we get some drizzle. but Yeah, that's okay. Well, especially you have a, like a beautiful lodge to go dry out oh, in. It's, yeah. you're, nobody's oh, the dying. Oh, is incredible. <laughs> yeah. It nobody's really getting is. hypothermia in yeah. Texas. Okay, not we're all, all. good. <laughs> um, do people need to bring their own? Cl- you provide clothing. You provide backpacks. I tell everybody like. What do they bring? Pack comfy. Bring your yoga pants. <laughs> because I bring, I give you everything else. Like comfortable shoes and comfy clothes to go through seminars, um, closed toed shoes for the range, but I provide ears, eyes, camouflage, uh, binoculars, everything else is covered. So basically anything that you would need, I've got. And those Just, are loners? No. Everything, get, people get to keep the ears, the they eyes, keep binoculars. Everything. Wow, that's a yeah. pretty good Loophold deal. Loophole supplies binoculars for every oh, single one of wow. our campers. Um, walkers supplies ears and eyes for all of our campers. I got leopard walkers coming Ooh, this year. I'm very excited about it. Spicy. Yeti provides little Yetis with the She Hunts logo on them. I wish uh, I had that right now to prog- product yeah. place. but <laughs> That's really wonderful. Um, yeah, it's incredible. We- our sponsors have been so generous. And that's what the swag bags are full of. So they get DSG provides an entire set of camo for mm-hmm. these girls. So it's, it's, it's really pretty incredible. 
that that's is Melissa incredible. Bachman's to thank for that one. She yeah. she hooked us up with DSG and and she, they've been an incredible supporter. Yeah, that's wonderful. And yes. to see women companies and non-women companies, yes. I should say also, uh, doing something great, right? Like, doing something great, yeah. exactly. Um, just, and that was well played, Christy. No. Uh, right? <laughs> and Sorry. really, just you know it. When I sell it, you know, for a company, when I when I talk about what we could do, you know, in order to to compensate them for what I'm asking for, for the gifts for these ladies, I tell them I'm inspiring confidence in a new hunter mm -hmm. and I'm telling them that this is the gear that I trust and they're going to be customers for life. Mm -hmm. And it is so true. Yeah. These women are like, wow, my loophole binoculars are incredible. I'm going to yeah. buy a scope. I'm going to buy a spotting scope. I'm going to buy, you know. And all these companies give discounts mm -hmm. for the girls to buy more gear. Mm -hmm. So it's incredible. I mean, they become shoppers. Mm -hmm. Women know? are Just, extremely... gives us 35% um, -like. off. Yeah, that's incredible. 35% off is mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. Cult-like and buying trends, yes. that's yes. for sure. Well, I am so excited about your camps. And I've, yeah. I, we talked about me trying to come out to one. And you it should. Just, but October, you were like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can't. You can't do it in or, October. But... March, need, April, May, maybe. Yeah, we need, well, this year, we, no, no. But what we need Next to do year. is plan and get it on the books yes. for 2024. Yes. It's so bad when, like, you're like, okay, so, my schedule so is true. booked for We're the year. We're almost sold out for 2023 yeah, already. It's crazy. Our She Hunts camps. I yeah. had to add all my 2024 dates because I have you're nothing to sell out. otherwise. Yeah. I've got, like, 16 spots for the year. Or you have to add more <laughs> camps. Yeah, which I'm not going to do. So. You're like, I can't do any more camps. I'm a, it's just... Yeah. I want to be my full self. Yeah. And I get burned out. I yeah, mean, it's a, it's a lot, lot of for energy. Me. Mm -hmm. I'm everybody's little spiritual, like, uh, what do they call it? Service dog. Yeah. The whole time I'm like, you're okay, you're okay. You know, and it, it takes a lot out of me. Mm -hmm. I love every minute of it, yeah. but I want to be my full self for every single camper. Yeah. I think five's my cap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I hear you on that. You yeah. have to have that no window yes. window yeah and you're providing such tremendous service there's really i don't think there's another program out there that is doing what you're doing it's not quite the same no no there's no. a couple camps yeah um but they're you know bring a tent hang out for a couple days type of things it's it's not all encompassing mm -hmm. um and there's some amazing ones don't get me wrong 100%. Um, but there's nothing quite like what we're doing yeah it's quite an experience yes Sounds fantastic. And I love every minute of it. So you have a um, <laughs> Facebook website. Yes. Instagram. All the things. All the things. And she just, hunts. She hunts. Yep. S-H-E-H-U-N-T-S. And you can find Miss Brittany Boddington yes. online as well. <laughs> and if you guys want to register for a camp, do it like ASAP. Because yep. like, or just do like what I'm doing and plan a year in advance. Yes. Which, you know, that's not such a bad thing either. It's you not. We're already selling plan. for 2024. Yeah. People do plan, plan more in advance these days, I, I find. I feel like you have to yeah. Just with how fa I mean, like I, this is so the cliche. older we get, the yes. life goes. I know <laughs> it. I was gonna say that like uh, we do kids I've it goes older, even faster. I'm like I blink my eye and I'm like oh it's been three months. Whoa, I can't that was my little you know, one's almost three. It's I know. crazy. I, know, I remember when you were pregnant. I like it, well, a minute we ago. just started it was a dating ago. when you were pregnant, yeah. and yeah. Um, now we're married. We're you know no kids, but we're married. I just have taco babies in my belly. It's <laughs> totally, totally different story. But um, yeah, it's it's time goes by so fast. It and, does. and what a legacy that you're building upon with you Thank know you. what your dad has done already yeah. and your family and so funny the other day Brad asked me my husband Brad asked me so how long do you see us doing this just ballpark and I'm like 20 years yeah. he was like okay so we bought a place in Texas there you go <laughs> he was like if we're gonna spend this much time here we need a home base yeah yeah <laughs> and we did. did so we are fully committed for the next 20 years yeah. <laughs> if you can't make it next year in the next 20. <laughs> yeah. So you've got time. So, yeah. but get it on your radar, get it in your planner. And, and, and what age can, can kids do 10 this? 10 and up. So if they're 10 years old, mom can register like yes. a full registration for kids. As long as mom comes with. Okay. Yes. No unsupervised. Yeah. No, because we're not a summer camp. We're no, not licensed not. for that. Insurance no. purposes, we need a guardian with. Okay. But yeah. your 10 year olds can register and do Absolutely. the class with you. And my 10 year old did last year and she loved it. She, she had so much fun. And in that camp, we had four ladies under 14. Oh. And it was so much fun for them. Yeah, and they've hoop. all been hunting since and they've all taken animals. Mm -hmm. One of them is actually a competitive shotgun shooter now. I know. Really? She had never shot before. Yeah. 
Well, you get, crazy. you get coached they by get an Olympian, and, <laughs> and you know, they get it's kind of like, oh, I can do this too. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, that is really awesome. Thank you so much for Absolutely. taking the time out of your day to come sit down with me. I could do this me. all day. <laughs> I know, right? It's actually kind of a problem because I talk too much. And then by the end of the day, I'm like, <sighs> well, you found a niche for <laughs> it. <laughs> Good for I found you. an outlet. <laughs> Maybe I need a podcast. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> My husband yeah. says I talk too much. Yeah, too. <laughs> I'm so bad. And yes, a podcast. And you know what the thing with the podcast is? It's actually really fun. Yeah. Like I... I get to meet so many (laughs) cool people that are doing extraordinary things. And, um, yeah, it's fascinating. Like, I I had no idea all this stuff about you. And it just, um, you're an incredible woman. And you're doing (laughs) such wonderful things for the hunting community. And and such a service to women and young ladies out there. So thank you you so much. (laughs) And thank you for joining us. And you guys, we're going to bring you more interviews from the SCI's 51st convention Mm -hmm. right here in Nashville, Tennessee. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.